if you've watched any of my videos about legal abuse or about divorce, you'll see an ongoing theme in there about question marks about how this could be and why it just seemed like it was such a hostile environment, why it seemed like it had no checks and balances, no sense of, of you know, there was no justice there, just absolutely no, there was really no laws there and there was no, it was just, it seemed like it was completely, there was no rhyme or reason to how it was working. I decided that I would watch this film called Divorce Corp. This movie exactly explains why all that is the way that it is and how I had touched on all these things but now I understand exactly why they were. The Divorce Court was set up, it's not a court of law. This is the thing, it's not a court of law, it's called a court of equity which means basically that it doesn't have to get, you don't have all your constitutional rights there. And we have like trial by jury and stuff in criminal court is because it, because it sets up a checks and balances. It's that no one person has all the power. Well, in divorce court, one person does have all the power. The judge has all the power. And so it makes a big difference. The things that are completely arbitrary to you make a big difference in how your divorce comes out. Your judge, your judge's biases, and the cozy relationship your judge has with what with the lawyers, either your lawyer or the opposing lawyer. It's you know it it's a really it's a system just set up for absolute corruption. And then the other thing is, is that the so was it fifty billion dollar industry, and so the incentives are not for peace. They're not for, you know, I, I was saying in, in some of my videos, I was saying, it seemed like I was the only one there that was really concerned about the kids, the, the best interests of the kids. Well, I was absolutely right. I wasn't imagining that. That was absolutely true because these guys, they're, they're really incentivized for money and they want to keep you in conflict. So if you get a high conflict, narcissistic person in there, it just totally plays to them. Children are like, are like the rabbits in a dog race. They're the thing that keeps it going. They're the thing that keeps it going. And so, you know, people are fighting for the kids, fighting because the kids are money. Because they see giving up the kids as giving up money. His solution is to more or less what they're doing in in Scandinavia. It's not done in court at all. In Scandinavia, basically, you file for divorce, you file a paper, and if there's no reconciliation in six months and if both parties still want a divorce, you're divorced. There's no law, there's no, there's no courts, there's no judges. It's just really corrupt because the lawyers in the courts want to keep it going they want to keep it going and they want to keep this they want to keep this system set up this way even though it's really outdated because there's a lot of money in it for them to keep it this way it's getting navy because there's no incentive for bad mouthing the other person there's no they don't, and people end up getting through their divorces somewhat intact you know they end up having and they haven't they haven't just completely betrayed the other person and made you know had to publicly smear them and all this stuff and so they can end up then going on to parent and do things together because they haven't just completely betrayed the other person and of course that's what we see in all of our friends that have amicable divorces and you know and like the divorce that I was trying to have in midst this whole conflict which just seemed reasonable to me that I would have I you know I couldn't have because I had a, I had a sociopath for a husband in 1969, we changed it to a no-fault divorce, but we you still had to go through court to get divorced. Which in Scandinavia, you don't go through court to get divorced. And so, and and then there's all these things that you don't get that you get in family court. There's no public defenders in family court. And so, and they've made it so complicated. They made the pa paper going so complicated that you really can't get through it without a lawyer, especially if the other party has a lawyer. And the judges will look down on you if you don't have a lawyer. And all these, you know, the different things that I've seen happen. I've seen the judges give people really bad times for not having lawyers. In this country, the only protection you have is that you are with a re you're divorcing a reasonable person. Again, the only protection you have is to be divorcing a reasonable person or to stay out of the court completely. Um, this divorce system is really corrupt and there is a whole movement now for divorce reform which I think is great but that's not going to be quick that's not going to be a quick thing happening and so your only protection against this is to, against the system is to not get into it it's to not get into the system which means a reasonable person that will just you know do a do a reasonable amicable divorce and you know that obviously means a non-narcissistic person you know about taking it slowly when you're dating someone, taking it really slowly and thinking to yourself, not would this person make a good husband or a good wife, not that. Think would they make a good ex, a good ex-wife or a good ex-husband.
ask yourself, would this person make a good ex-wife or ex-husband? Really, truly, because it's a weird way to think, but there's a 50% chance that's where you're gonna end up. And if it's the second time, if you've already been through this once, it's the second time it goes up to 65% or something, and third time it's up to it's up like 72%. So, you know, really think in terms of like, how would this person be if we if this doesn't work out, we're gonna end up getting divorced, how are they gonna be? I had asked that question, would they be a good ex-husband? I would have known better. I would have a, I would have a closer guess that no, they wouldn't be. But I didn't ever think we were going to be at that point. I thought, obviously, we were going to be, you know, happily ever after and all of that stuff, of course. There's corruption there. There's corruption and greed and all that with the lawyers and the judges, who I also believe are narcissistic. I mean, who, would, who wants this kind of a job? That just seems like a narcissism heaven right there. Narcissistic people are the problem. It's not all men. It's not all women. And so even though the laws are right now set up, they are set up to... Theoretically, it's not to, not to set up not to benefit women. They're to they are they are set up to benefit the um, dependent person. So whether that's a man or a woman, that doesn't. It's not about men or women. It's about who is dependent and who is the the provider. Um, but and in now, eighty percent of homes have two incomes. You know, have two incomes. And so in in Scandinavia, also they don't make child support based on income. Child support is based on the what you need to what you need to raise a kid and it's it's across the board no matter what your income is and, and here's the other thing in this country you can use you can use your your alimony or whatever you can use that to pay your legal fees so there's all kinds of incentives for people to get you know these these outrageous things the flip side to this dependent thing is that we also have this mother up on a pedestal thing mother up on a pedestal and so all he had to do was make allegations about me that didn't have to be proven, didn't have to have any any basis in fact, but that I was that I had a drug problem or an alcohol problem and he and just as alleged. That. And then what was expected of a mother was so much more than what was I mean he just had to show up. You know, I had to be virtuous. I had to be you know, and so the fact that he could even make these allegations about me, which, you know, and I did a really bad job of, you know, I should have just said, you know, screw you, that's not true. You know, but I didn't really handle it that way. I, I believe that he was had a real concern about it, and I was vulnerable because I had I was sick and I had gone through this stuff, and I was injured and I was taking medications, and so I had a vulnerability, and I just I didn't I didn't I didn't understand the game I was in. I just didn't understand the game I was in until I'd already lost it, you know, and, and I really lost it. So happened that my timing of my divorce was right when the big father's rights things w was really happening, and my judge. The judge that I got had just won his own high publicity father's rights case. And so he was this big father's rights advocate. And so, I mean, it just, it, every different angle that it could have gone wrong for me, it did. And um, and so it was, you know, it was just, it was really bad and coming from every different side and there was no way I could get ahead of it. And so to think that it's just, all, you know, I hear so many things about how it just favors the woman and it's just all about women and, and, and you know, I suppose that would be true, but you're, it's it really what it, it favors the narcissist. It favors someone who's going to take advantage of this thing. Now, if you have a really crooked, greedy uh, woman, then yes, I can see why a lot of men would feel that way because um, you know certainly. It, but the, but this system, this system is it it encourages people to make false claims against each other and to try and make each other look bad. And I never did that. And so, therefore, I got really screwed over. And there was no, um, you know, there's no perjury charges. There, you know, even when I was proved to be lying, there was, no, there was no downside to that. There was no downside to lying in this court of equity. It was like, you know, he could, you know, just keep throwing these things at me. And I was con constantly on the defensive. And, um, you know, it just, I just never got ahead of it. Never got ahead of it. And, uh, and then also, you know, uh, several years later, he took me back. He wanted, he, even when the kids were teenagers, he took me back for another custody thing. And, um, and in that, he was winning nothing. He was proven right off the bat to be, you know, making false claims. But he was still able to keep it going. And this is where I really thought there is something going on here because 
if the if the courts were had the best interests of the kids in mind, they would have they would have immediately when he was you know found to be lying right at the beginning, just put a stop to it. Said no, you put these people through enough. This is it. We're we're done. You know, you're not getting away with this anymore. Stop. But he wasn't. He was he, he was allowed even after being found to be lying in the beginning. He was able to just keep conflict going, even though he was getting nowhere. He kept conflict going for over a year, and by the time it was over, my sons were both suicidal, and one of them was doing heroin. And you're divorcing a bad person. It's going to go bad, and it's not because they're a man or a woman. It's just because they're a bad person, and this system is set up to benefit a bad person. And so the system needs to be changed, and we need to be a lot more careful about who we're marrying and really take that decision really slowly. Only protection from this system is to stay out of it. Most people, I'm sure if you have people that had, that had amicable divorces or whatever, that's what they did. They handled most of it on their own, I'm sure, because once you have all systems go and you have lawyers and you're in court, you're not having an amicable divorce. You know, you, you, it's already out of control by the time you're in court. Anyone who is expecting to get any kind of justice or protection in court, or is expecting the court to look out for you and your kids, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. The best protection you have for you and your kids is before you ever get married, is picking the right person. And if you've already picked the wrong person and you know it, at least if you know it, then you're then you're then you're wise to get you know all this information about court but knowing what you're headed into is, is really the ticket i did not know what it was going to be like i did this i did by the time the custody thing came around i knew what i was up against and he didn't win a single thing but i also couldn't stop it even if you know here's the thing even if you know you can't stop it it's this runaway train and as long as the per, as long as there's someone in there that wants conflict to keep going they'll be able to keep it going Everyone in the process is enjoying the conflict, but you and your kids, you know, that's the thing. And again, set up to be dependent and provider. So it isn't men and women, it's dependent and provider, which does happen more often than not to be the woman who is the one who's the more dependent. But in 80% of the cases, it's, it's immaterial anyway, because it's two, two incomes. And, and in my case, we had a business, we were running a business together. We were 50-50 owners and I ended up completely penniless and he ended up with everything. So, you know, how does that happen? I just hear, I hear it a lot with men. I hear a lot of men, you know, thinking that it's a woman thing. And I, and I feel really bad about that because it's really not a woman thing. It is a bad system. And, and if you have a bad woman, it, you know, then I, you know, but it is a bad system that is, it, it is benefiting people that are prone to conflict and prone to be, um, you know, want this win-lose thing and, and are not, don't have a problem with lying and, and don't care about, you know, taking care of the kids' needs first and all that. If that's the person you are going with in court, it's going to be a battle because that's what the court is set up for. But I, I hate to see good people getting paranoid of each other, you know, you know, and, and blaming it all on women or all on men. And I, I hate, you know, I just hate to see that happening. One of the things that I kind of touched on in my other legal abuse videos my other, my other divorce videos, uh, this film brought it all around and explained why that was happening. And so it kind of made sense of, you know, I was just talking from first-hand experience about the things that happened and how to protect yourself, but it kind of gives the, uh, now I understand the, the foundation of why it was happening that way. And it is, it wasn't in my imagination and it wasn't, it wasn't just my one-off situation. It is actually set up that way. More likely to be that than not be that. In my case, it was just especially bad because I had somebody who was really aggressive and so were his lawyers and so was the judge and it was all just really bad and I was especially vulnerable. And so, and I had no support and you know, I was just terrified and all this stuff. And so it was, you know, really bad for me. It would have been really bad for anybody who, in my situation, the more prepared you are, the better for you will be. The more decent a person you're divorcing, the better off you'll be. These judges, I mean, it is really, the amount of power that they have is really, there is no, nothing else like it. I mean, if, if a judge just doesn't like you, they could ruin your life. You know, if a judge doesn't like you or doesn't like your lawyer, it could ruin your life. And that actually happened to me too. The first lawyer that I went to court with, the judge hated her. I could tell immediately, like, I can't, the judge hates this lawyer. You know, it was like nothing about me at all. The judge hated my lawyer. And that started off on all the wrong foot too. So it was just, it was just, you know, it, for my case, it went from bad to worse. And so, um, you know, I, I have a, a worst case scenario story about, but the system is set up for that. And then 
you know, if you want to see how bad it can be, you take a look at my divorce, and that's how bad it can be. Your best chances are to not go there. Your best chances are to be with, just to keep yourself out of divorce court. And obviously, either by staying married, obviously, or but by having, by ha be, being with someone who's reasonable that won't want, to, won't want to fight you like this, and having a reasonable divorce. What that means is prevention is everything. It means not marrying a person who's problematic, and so taking it slow, and getting to know someone, and, and Please, 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 if you are still going through anything like this, do not start dating anybody if you are at all vulnerable. If you're going through this or you're going through a big, big financial thing or you've been emotionally, um, you're emotionally distraught, you're financially going through a hard time, you've lost someone, you've had a major death in the family or something like that, anything like that, please don't date because you're going to be very very vulnerable to to being picked out by a bad person and then your ability to see through it and all that you will be hopefully smarter than you were before but you're not you're not in any real shape to wanting to be doing that you're really not safe especially if you're a person who's already had narcissistic abuse in your past or you have you have a history of being raised by narcissists and this is a, this is a, if narcissism is a theme in your life you are especially vulnerable and need to really, really heal yourself and have your life functioning and working out for you and be taking care of your own self, take care of yourself, have an intact life and be whole and feel strong before you start dating. When I met the husband that I have now, I didn't want to even be dating. I didn't want to get married at all. I was, I was doing fine. I had, I had made it through everything. I'd had several years single and, um, and I was not in a hurry to get married. I kept putting him off, putting him off, putting him off. And that was the best thing because I ended up with someone who is truly loving and it's not, uh, it's not work at all to be married to him. You know, a nice person is a much more important thing than you think. You know, just a person who's just a nice, decent person, a decent person really matters.